Moin, moin, moin and hello ladies and gentlemen und Spector here today with another tip review and today I'm taking a look at, uh, <laughs> what want to say, one of Dunu's finest. We are taking a look at the Dunu SNS ear tips and yes, uh, we'll write for introduction here. I think you should have heard of Dunu, they are kind of big or semi big player in the IEM space. Usually they make, yeah, more like, I would say like more ent enthusiast products. Uh, one of my most famous ones, most likely the SA6, which comes with six balance armatures and is renowned to be pretty warm, relaxed and fun to listen to. And yeah, um, here well, we are taking a look at ear tips. And as you can see already, they come a pretty shiny package. And what do you get with the SS tier tips is, let me just directly unbox it. You get this carrying case, which says do new on them, which you just flip open from the bottom like this. And it manages to hold, I think this would be 12 tips here or six pairs, but it only comes with three pair of SNS tips from which I have removed one pair because yes, <laughs> of course need to review them. And uh, price-wise, they clock in at about mm, 13 to 15 dollars, so depending on where you buy it, which doesn't make them cheap, but definitely not expensive. Um, because yeah, with this, this makes in per, per, per pair pricing of about 4.3 to 5 dollars. And on a scale to the other tips I've reviewed, the um, S and uh, uh, DD Hi-Fi ST35 tips are 3 dollars per pair, complete foams between like 5 to 8 dollars per pair, Zedna Yefit like $6.5 per pair, final uh, final e-tips like 7.5, and uh, Softius Liquid Silicon 9, and on the high end of things would be when Elastex 9.5, and Asla Crystal of 12.5. So, as you can see, pretty like, not affordable, but medium priced, and yeah, that makes them generally, at least price-wise, more interesting than other tips. And uh, yeah, but what do you get with the tips? So let's talk about comfort already. This is what you get. And as you can see, it's, it's a cylinder. Like, like that's it. Like, it's a cylinder. Like, nothing else, nothing more. It's a pure cylinder. It's not bent outward slightly like the E-Pro tip that I have here. You can see E-Pro being slightly outward bent, not really having the ball shape, but also not pure cylinder. And this one really is, is a cylinder. That, that's it. So, uh, yeah, that generally means it comes with advantages and disadvantages, which we talk about later. But uh, here I have the size S, um, yeah, which is actually small. So you don't really need SS because this basically is SS. It comes with an outer diameter of about 9 millimeter, which <laughs> is pretty damn small. Most other tips, even in SS, are like 10 or 9.5. So this definitely is nice even for very small ear canals. And uh, other than that, you of course will get uh, um, the M tip, which is about 10 millimeters in diameter. L is about 11.5 and XL 13. So overall, I think the size variety Dune offers with the SNS tips is pretty good. Everybody should be able to find something that fits for them. And yeah, absolutely no complaints there. However, um, <laughs> let's now talk about the disadvantages that you get with this pure cylinder shape. And that's a pretty damn, yeah, I want to say, like, it's hidden, hit or miss. Like, really, this shape is hit or miss completely. On some IEMs that did have an, I want to say, medium short nozzle also, but very well, I could it to fit very comfortably. We have absolutely nothing speaking against it for even, like, hours on an end. <laughs> and then on other IEMs again, it somehow created some weird hotspots in my ear and it got comfortably, uh, uncomfortable, like, relatively fast. Um, usually I noticed this for more like longer nozzle IEMs being the case uh, because then this tip is also relatively long so it does insert more in this direction in your ear canal and then pokes on the inside in the, in the S shape you have in your ear canal that obviously is uncomfortable. But overall I would still say um, if you get these on a nozzle that fits your ear canal well or is not too long I think these can be pretty damn comfortable and I had no complaints there. But let me get its uh, competition again in the picture. This is the E-Pro tip. And <laughs> I just think the E-Pro tip is better. Like it usually fits better. It is not so finicky as the S&S tip here. Yeah, most likely because as you can see again, it's slightly bent outwards unlike this. So that generally helps to give it a better fit and better seal. And yeah, uh, all this being pretty subjective here, 
I still would prefer the uh, ePro just pure comfort wise over the S and S tab here. Uh, in my comfort ranking, uh, these are mm, like medium-ish, let's say that. So most comfortable on the left here would be Xenastax, followed by CutFoam, followed by SpinFit. Uh, here I'm particularly talking about the CP360. On the same level as Liquid Silicon, on the same level as ST35 tips, followed by S&S tips, followed by Crystal, followed by finally. And yes, I said how these clock in there like a tiny bit above s and s but still a bit below the ST35 tips because yeah, uh, generally the like spin fit idea that has some kind of rotatable front part is really good and generally does not create hotspots unlike these two. Okay, next let's talk about noise isolation and let's quickly look at the material diameter here. So we have comparison and you can already see this is more thick material than other uh, silicon tips, which should, in theory, lead to better isolation. Well, the main problem here is again the fit. Like really, because the fit is so hit and miss, I had a few IEMs which created air gaps, which of course were in worse in space, but also is bad for isolation. And even if you get a hotspot, it also kind of somehow weirdly bends the uh, tip, and I think also affects isolation. So. I don't think this is a really well isolating tip, just because the yeah the shape in general is a bit problematic, at least in my ear kennel. So yes, that means if you get a good seal with it and you have a like medium long nozzle where you can also insert it all the way without getting uncomfortable, then it does isolate pretty decent. And on my arbitrary scale from zero to ten, where one is like really bad uh, silicon tips that are really thin and finicky and basically don't seal at all to 10 which would be the perfect fitting foam tip with a dense foam yeah this manages like five like if you get a really well fitting IEM for your year maybe we can talk about on six but generally it's more than five so it's all right but not great and then let's talk about shaping sound and uh, yeah again we talk about subjective and objective stuff and yeah, let me show you the tip again in close up here. You can see that it's cylinder, all right? Like there's no other shaping going on. So that usually makes it pretty similar because the outlet diameter should make it similar to most medium nozzle outlet tips. And uh, yeah, <laughs> although Dunu describes, and um, I will quote Dunu here again. <coughs> SNS ear tips bring amazing high frequency extensions to your headphones. They gradually improve dynamic range and also improve sound stage. Prepare yourself to experience studio grade sound quality with your headphones. Explanation mark, explanation mark. So, first takeaway here, and I quote you like this is not edited by me or so, this is what they write. Yeah, Dunu's English is still not great. Even for me as non-native speaker, I can clearly see they should hire a translator to do the job. It's not good and I'm not sure like how we can manage to write it this bad. But uh, that aside, it's in straight tube and they claim it improves treble extension and sound stage. So um, I think at least the first point is kind of true. Like I didn't have the feeling it at least worsened sound stage. Uh, at least compared to my regular tips or like my regular benchmark tips here, which are medium uh, outlet. Um, but also compared to uh, something else, like the even wider ones, the crystal tips, for instance, I didn't notice this to be more bright or um, to be a better extension than those tips. Um, also, yeah, cr uh, spring tips, same thing. Like I didn't have the feeling it improved the treble or the treble extension. On the other hand, well, uh, unlike on the crystal and the spring, at least if you have the spring tips on IEMs where the, uh, the tip itself would still stand out like this. Like if this is not nozzle here and the uh, tip still stands out like that, that deteriorates base usually with uh, those like more really horn-shaped tips. Uh, with this one, though, I did not have the feeling that. So base just basically stayed the same. And yeah, even on IEMs where I'm absolutely sure they extend past 10k, like the planars, uh, the last one here would be the PR2, which I have been listening to. Yeah, I don't think it noticed, like I didn't notice much and yeah, it's basically the same. The only tip that I can like really clearly by my own hearing say that did make actually treble worse and also affected extension. Yeah, that is a fine lead tip. So if you are treble head or if you like more treble, don't go for that. But uh, for what they claim here, 
I mean, it doesn't make extension worse, so I think we can say it's studio grade because it's <laughs> as great as all other tips that have medium uh, diameter outlet. Yeah, uh, but other than that, soundstage, like, no, sorry, like, it was basically identical. I didn't hear any difference there. And then we come to objective, and I'll be throwing on measurements again on an IEC 7.1 coupler, uh, done with a bazillion different tips already, and um, yeah, I think we can make a chart here. It's it's basically identical on VH40, and even on VA7, uh, where uh, it has a smidge more treble in the upper treble transition, like smidge more. It's just about one decibel, and I'm not sure if you can hear one decibel at this region. Like you could also be measuring error here, so I think we can consider also the treble extension claim, of um, like at least compared to other tips that have the same or similar outlet diameter, also to be false. And then last but not least, let's talk about additional factors. And well, you guessed it. This is in very unique shape. I have not seen any other tip that goes for a pure cylinder shaping like this. Like usually it's like a bit less ball shape sometimes, like a bit less that and a bit more like this. But we always have this like ball shape here at the beginning and then extend that. But do not decide it. Nope. Pure cylinder, um, relatively soft ring at the front. So they definitely is unique and <laughs> I don't want to applaud them, but I say, hey, you tried something and it will probably work for some people. And I definitely like that. Uh, also adding to... Uh, yeah, with the fact that they tried something. This carrying case actually is nice. Stays shut pretty well. It's not so easy to open, but that's why you also won't open it accidentally. And it fits a good amount of tips. So that can also be nice for travel or where you want to go and just want to fit a few more tips inside. Um, but I'm actually not entirely sure about the material here. I said it in my unboxing as well. <laughs> when I unboxed these and I just had a random smell, those smelled sour, like vinegary sour even. I'm not sure what material they actually use and how long it will last because I have smelled so many silicon tips and this one did not smell like anything I've smelled before. Like no silicon smell, like not, not a foam. It was just sour and a bit vinegary. I'm, I'm not sure how that can be and if this is a fault to material or how it was stored. I don't know, but um, I'm not sure again, like how or what this material actually is and how it will last. And that's why I can also not recommend cleaning it with alcohol because this clearly also doesn't feel like a random silicon tip like this one here. That feels like silicon, like, uh, I don't know, like it feels totally normal to me. And this one is interesting for one case because um, when it is not warm, like really just lying around somewhere, it's very like you know, slippery. And I think there's like actually not much going on and it should, uh, yeah, basically go out of here pretty quickly. But when it warms up and it gets a bit wet, then, then it somehow gets sticky. Like, I could feel it now again. It is definitely on the sticky side. And that means, in terms of cleaning, you will need to clean this more often because it just collects ear gunk much better than, for instance, here the E-Pro tip. And yeah, because I don't know what material they use, I can't tell you to use alcohol. And I would recommend just use some warm water, maybe a bit of soap, but just be careful because, yeah, materials like this, Similar maybe to the XL Astex, I'm not sure how long they last. Like so far after using them for a few weeks, I didn't notice the like the XL Astex, but they expand because XL Astex are usually like small, at least when I bought them, and now they expanded to like quite a bit more and I can't get them even on some uh, IMs no more because they just expanded so much. I've not experienced this here, but I've also only tried them on like a handful of IMs for a week or so, or for two maybe. Uh, so yeah, your knowledge may vary and I'd rather be careful with material that has not been proven uh, outside of anything else. So yes, um, uh, oh, but when we talk about uh, material, this is relatively stretchable and you can fit it on thick nozzle IEMs. Um, I like to use it on the AJ07M, which has a 6.4 millimeters nozzle. However, let me note, this nozzle is pretty short and it has a pretty smallish lip. So this fit on very well, but on the variations that has basically the same diameter outlet on the nozzle, but it's way longer. I couldn't really get this to fit on there and I didn't want to force it on too much because yeah, like it can also tear apart there. So yes, I cannot recommend the SNS tips for really wide nozzle IEMs, at least if it's longer. But if you have a shorter nozzle like the AJ7M, it's totally fine. You can fit it on, I think, most IEMs. And that brings me to the conclusion. I think generally Duno did good with the S&S tips. It's definitely something I've not seen from other brands and 
I'm pretty sure like this will find some people who are like, oh, this is exactly the shape that fits my ear canal. I think it could be improved if they use the concept of the uh, uh, spin fit tips and add an additional kind of bend off in the middle so that the tip actually can swivel like that in your canal. That would probably still make it better for some people. But as it is now, I think it's pretty decent. And also think, uh, judging from the material used here, that definitely is not standard. And the carrying case, I even think the 13 to $15 for free tips is kind of fair. It's not cheap, definitely. And I would absolutely take the ST35 tips any day of the week. But still, it's it's still fair priced, and I would take this, I think, over uh, definitely over the normal X L uh, X L uh, normal Zetna fit ear tips. Like totally out of question there. However, again, uh, the pure cylinder shape comes and then hit or miss, at least for my ear. And I think you should be uh, you should uh, consider this. Like, do you really want to have an, uh, a tip that is not so cheap and maybe not work for you on the IM you want to have it on? It can create hot spots and can uh, create a no seal at all. So uh, keep that in mind if you take a look at this tip. So yeah, generally, I still find it a bit difficult to recommend these, like given a pure recommendation, like the uh, ST35 tips. <laughs> but if I compare it to the actual false marketing of the E-Pros, I think I would still give Dunu, who just mm, have a bullshit marketing slogan, but don't claim bullshit about the tip itself, still th think I would still buy these over the E-Pro tip. But yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, if you have criticisms, if you have tip recommendations, please leave a comment. And with this, John Spector, out.